let's keep pushing it around, have a walk in it as John and see how it plays because the big deal about building a level is the scale. Because as I'm making this path right now, I have no idea how long it'll take to walk through it or anything like that, you know? And we approach. Dope. Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and welcome back to the game! Now, at this point, I'm more or less settled on the PCG aspect, like how I generate my forest, for now. We'll wait and see how we can progress with it further when Unreal Engine 5.3 comes out, maybe in terms of optimization and stuff like that. Uh, but so far, I'm pretty happy with the tools I have. I have splines like this to generate path, to remove the forest. It adds little bumps that we covered in the recent video about how to actually sculpt your landscape using PCG. So these little actors right here, they raise the landscape above the uh, base level and that's something you can select and move around. Right here I have this um, group of objects called Environment Module 01 and it includes a couple of paths. This one meadow area which is some kind of round spot that you can you know modify and make more complex if you want and wherever you put it, it will uh, remove the forest from that area, but we'll keep some of the bushes around and uh, throw some stones in and stuff like that. And um, also, if you move it about, it also has like a raising point that you can modify and place in a certain area where you need it. And also I have these little areas right here that are pretty much bold spots. So wherever you need to place something important, uh, you will uh, have this little circle right here and it will remove everything, like leaving pretty much a bold ground in this area, except for a little piles of the forest floor that are pretty much present everywhere, as well as sticks, stuff like that. And generally, I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, the PCG generation at the moment is a lot more responsive, like this is pretty fast for my forest. So yeah, I refactored certain things and uh, improved the way I sample the landscape. So there's no excessive resampling going on. So things are a little bit snappier. So that's fun. And yeah, right now I want to go ahead and start my stupid demo level. By stupid, I mean that obviously I've been kind of stalling a little bit. And I realized why is because, you know, this is my first game. It's gonna be stupid. There's gonna be things that are not gonna be very well presented or stuff that I won't be able to pull off. I can't get away from that. All I can do is go ahead and make the thing and see what happens. And then we'll make another one and it will be better. That's the only way to go about it. So let's go ahead and start with the stupid plan I prepared right here in my script for the level. It's actually quite elaborate at the moment. It involves a lot of puzzles and, uh, you know, walking around the forest, stuff like that. So there's certain like slow burning beginning of the game and build up as we progress further. So the general idea of this beginning of the story is that our guy John is getting lost in a park. Which circumstances exactly, like I have two versions, I still haven't decided exactly on which one I want to have, but that's not necessary for the demo level at the moment. I'm sad definitely on the fact that this used to be a park and John eventually, he, he gets very um, distracted by a certain uh, object. I'm thinking it would be like a mushroom with uh, special fractal looking patterns on it and he gets like mesmerized by it and then when he uh, gets back into paying attention to his environment he realizes that no one's around and he tries to walk around and see where everyone went and um, well no one's there and there doesn't seem to be any end to this park and the deeper John goes into the park the more and more the park starts to look like a very deep and very strange forest with um, well, we'll see how much of the weird, infinite, repeating and strange features that will present. But yeah, there's 
quite a canvas for that kind of stuff. Uh, so far, right now, I have a plan of uh, building the first part of this um, this whole situation. So we're in this um, kind of like a deep park so far, right? And uh, John uh, was walking around and he's coming from there. Somewhere in here, like the cutscene is happening as he walks around and in here he's standing and realizing like, where the hell am I? Where is everybody? I don't remember any of this. He is looking at his phone maybe and seeing that no connection. The map is showing that he's somewhere in the middle of the city, but it's definitely not the case. So complete disconnect from everything, uh, like no help. And like it's been quite a bit of a while so he is getting really nervous so yeah and that's where we start so the beginning will be pretty much we just take a walk we walk around john has some you know thoughts and ideas about what's going on after a while uh, john will stumble upon a gate and that gate will have like a fence continuing it, a very strong like black metal kind of uh, tough gate with a lot of repeating patterns. And a part of this gate will also be that altar that we sculpted before in Shape Lab. So that will be a part of it. And right now I want to have John walking towards that gate. So let's go ahead and do that area. Pretty much we're pretty close to having that uh, done, but uh, let's add a little bit more stuff, maybe some loops and weird things because we can pretty much build as complex of an area as we want. The only thing we need to make sure we do here is that it's gonna be at least somewhat fun to go through. <laughs> But yeah, the big thing will be about the gate and next to the gate will be several areas like John will be trying to walk around the gate, uh, walk around that fence trying to see where it ends and he will stumble upon several areas that will be a piece of the puzzle of how to go through the gate. And uh, rushing a bit forward, I'll say that the moment he goes through the gate, he is uh, like at the point of no return and uh, that will be not a park anymore at all. <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, do all of that. I'm just gonna so far maybe just continue our path a little bit. So I changed the way I generate the forest a bit, pretty much the whole landscape is just gonna be a forest. I don't need like a special loop of a spline showing where it ends because I don't need any bold landscape areas anyway. Like if I'll need any, I'll use a special circle specifically to make the area bold. Pretty much this is where John is. It's like an infinite area like this. So let's keep uh, pushing it around and maybe uh, have a walk in it as John and see how it plays. Because the big deal about building a level, as far as I can tell, like zero experience here. So we're learning together, guys. <laughs> but one thing I noticed is like the biggest challenge is the scale. Because as I'm making this path right now, I have no idea how long it'll take to walk through it or anything like that, you know? It's quite a guesswork. You need to really go through it and see. Right now I want to add another spline like this. So I have these frequently used objects here, which is a very convenient little thing here. You can create like collections. And here's another spline, like path spline. So I'll just put it like this next to this one and it will be sort of maybe creating a little loop or whatever. This thing is so cool, like alt and click and you're building the thing as if it's just a block out of a level, but really you're building the high end final version of it. This is so crazy. So yeah, in terms of like the variety of what's going on in the forest, I am planning to add another thing that a little piece of land that is like a raised level of, of a ground. Uh, I don't know what these are cold, but you know where there would be like like a hill and then it would be like a little area that's raised kind of like a canyon situation you know but not of that scale just a little patch of land that is higher and the rest is like crumbled and that's it and kind of and there's more forest growing on top of that and uh, whatever bushes and stuff going on 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 its walls 
And I feel like that's an important thing to create because first of all, how long am I gonna be able to pull off the idea that John just can't walk through these bushes? Like, this is ridiculous, right? We need, like, better explanation of why John is just, uh, you know, manipulated into following just these paths. One reason, of course, is when you're in the forest, you really don't want to go off the path because then you're completely lost. But yeah, in this case, like, uh, maybe it would, like, just as a player, you know, you feel a bit restricted for no good reason when uh, things are just, like, blocking you with just bushes. But uh, generally, I am planning to make them a bit denser and looking more more like they uh, make a good reason of not letting the player through. But adding like bigger rocks and uh, these kind of patches of land that can go really far, we can really make John walk in between two walls of the land, like in a crack in a way, with uh, those kind of patches of canyon style mountains or something like that, like, I don't know. That would be pretty cool, it would bring more variety to the thing, and that kind of stuff would be defined with another type of this kind of spline loops, right? So instead of just making the forest bold, it would actually raise a piece of land like this. On that note, by the way, here's another type of an object, and this is called like just a big object, right? And this is another way I was planning to, uh, you know, constrain uh, where John can go and where he can't go, but it doesn't work that great because all these assets of just standalone complete rocks, they're like pretty big, but never even nearly big enough to really shape a level, you know? It's just, well, it's a big rock, but you really have to like throw a whole bunch of them next to each other in order to make something that would block away. So yeah, I threw a few objects like that, but they really didn't introduce much. I guess it's just a little bit of a controlled thing, but really I, uh, I will probably create those kind of raised pieces of land, that would be pretty cool. And another big reason to introduce that kind of big levels of ground, like massive levels that will obstruct the view on the huge amount of the forest when you're standing on the ground. So if I would hit play right now, let's by the way walk through our path. There we are. So yeah, this is where John came from. It's like uh, sort of a path and he would run through it. Uh, really can see a good place for uh, making a cool cutscene of John running around and being a bit nervous, you know, and then he stands here and like, what the hell is going on? Where the hell am I? And then we keep going. Right now I'm building the procedural part of the level, right? Then I will be adding more of a specific things, something intentional, uh, like these uh, fog areas I'm placing here and there, they're not procedural, I just put them here. So what I wanted to tell you, as I'm looking forward right now, John is seeing uh, these bushes and they're obstructing his view to a whole bunch of the rest of the forest. But the way nanite technology works, which is this awesome technology that lets me use these millions and millions of polygons on the forest and, uh, you know, have my computer not die immediately, there is one weak side to this technology. When you're looking at a whole bunch of very, very tiny objects, it makes really hard for Nanite to understand where things get completely obstructed and you don't have to calculate stuff deeper into the landscape, like closer to horizon or something like that. But with these giant mountains, obstructing paths. Those will be quite enough of a big object to let Nanite understand that I don't have to look behind that big wall of the land, uh, not calculate objects, not visualize them when they are not needed. Anyway, so we have this going on. I, I forgot to do another thing, by the way, so you can see right here these little actors along the path, they're raising the land a little bit, as I mentioned before, these, uh, this stuff is happening, right? The new parts that I created, they don't uh, do it yet, because you need to trigger it separately, like I would clean up and remove these guys here and then I would generate again and it would add all of this extra bumping action all over 
all of the paths. Generally, this will be the area where John is just looking all over the, the place. Maybe I'll uh, add some other stuff, like I'll improvise some extra little details. But overall, it will be an area where John would, you know, share some thoughts and uh, just a way to ease in to the world in this little, I don't know, two minute walk. And after this, John just keeps going forward and in here, the forest will become very dense. There will be like a lot of bushes that he will need to like break through. Uh, maybe with like having to hit a certain button for him to just break through uh, these bushes. And when he breaks through, that's where that strange gate will happen. And it will introduce a little bit of the zoning again, meaning um, after breaking through these dense bushes, there will be pretty much like no need to go back and probably I'll make it not an option. The reason to do this is so a player that would be trying to solve the gate puzzle wouldn't think that they need to go back and look all over this area to find some kind of clues and little details. It's an unnecessary complexity like, you know, we're sparing the player a little bit of time so they wouldn't have to do that. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is uh, where this path is ending, I would say. Let's make it here. And right now I'll add another piece of the path. And this one will be just defining where that gate is. So it's pretty much going to be like a bold area, like this. And several zones will be uh, around this fence. I think it's a good idea to like disable more complex details that's something they recommend doing as well like forest terrain and like these smaller bushes and sticks we'll just disable them for now and it should be a lot lighter while still showing us everything we need actually it's even a lot snappier in terms of uh, camera movement like the performance is way better without these this huge amount of tiny details all over the place so yeah i have quite a few of interesting <laughs> puzzles and absurd ways of uh, getting through this gate so it'll be pretty fun i hope i don't know i hope it all makes sense like uh, i really uh, find certain levels of absurdity uh, in this kind of horror puzzles very attractive but i hope it works the way i approach it <laughs> i don't know so yeah, now let me see exactly how many areas we need around like the whole gate puzzle. I, I will add a little meadow area right here next to the gate. Boop, like this. We can also add like a bold spot to make sure there is no rocks where we don't need them. And I'm just gonna stretch it out a bit. Not sure if it's necessary, but it seems like a more of a specific area here. So we could use a cleaner canvas. Yeah, uh, about the path, uh, we need a space for John to walk, but also a space for the fence to be, right? So it needs to be a bit wider for sure. So yeah, we just made it a bit wider like this and it will become way too wide actually oh my god that's like some kind of main street of a city level of width fifth avenue they say select all spline points let's make it a bit thinner so yeah let's say for now this will be the width of it so the whole idea is uh, john goes here and he finds this gate and there's an altar and john tries a few ways of like seeing how he can get through it he tries to open the gate it's locked he tries to walk around but the whole thing is forever it seems and the gate is tall and spiky which is something to memorize uh he can't climb over and he is about to walk away somewhere because there's like no way to go and the moment he tries to walk away he suddenly hears a weird noise like a strange bird sound so john looks around and he notices that there's a bird sitting on one of the pillars of the gate and there's a key in its beak so john is like oh wow it's, uh, it's a key please don't fly away if you're a bird anyway because like the bird is gonna look very strange maybe kind of meat bird i don't know <laughs> we'll see about that 
Um, but John tries different options to get the key from the bird, like screaming, throwing a stone. This part is like pretty much the gameplay part. So you, the player is presented with the bird on the gate and you can do different stuff, including like trying to throw something at it. But most of these uh, ways would just um, either scare the bird away or kill it and it would fall behind the gate, like you won't be able to get the key. So you pretty much you don't touch the bird and you end up having to look around and see how you can attract the bird. And uh, the altar in front of the gate will be where you should put something to attract the bird. So that's pretty much the premise. But this whole story will end in a bit of an unexpected way. I, I, I'm not sure, I don't think I'll be able to keep this whole process spoiler free, but for now I just don't want to give everything away. Now, walking around, John finds several spots with peculiar things. So there will be a dead beehive with strong painkiller pills and a spider in it, so that's one area with a beehive. Uh, then there is a old medical locker dug halfway into the ground, but it may be also like not just a locker, but almost like a hospital room in a way, like right in the middle of the forest. Not just hospital, maybe the um, dentist area. Now that's two. The third area would be teeth growing in a human jaw order on a tree with one tooth missing. So that's the third area. And then there will be a an undulating, not sure how to say this word, but I love it, undulating, warm spot of soil with dried thick puddles of blood on a raincoat next to it. So undulating, I, I don't know if it's a common word, but when someone's breathing, their, their torso is doing this like up and down, <laughs> that's undulating. That, as far as I know. So we have four areas, right? We need to introduce those around here. Path spline. Yeah, I think we should like uh, have some use of this whole area here. So the further two will we'll have like a little path to make them go a bit further and the spot will be here. And the closer ones will, will be like a spot right next to the path, kind of like that pattern, like so. When you're walking down the main path in here, you wouldn't kind of see through the trees the spot. It needs to be a little bit further away. I'm sure there are other ways to solve this. So yeah, the landscape is finishing like right here. That's totally not a problem. It's not set in stone. I can add more rectangles of the landscape at any moment and it will generate more forest there. So yeah, what's funny about all of this is how this whole process is so ridiculous. Like anyone who's ever created games, they would say like, this is the dumbest way to build a game because you really need to have like a concrete plan, you know? <laughs> and stuff like that, but I feel like I'm in this lucky situation with this whole procedural content generation thing where I get to kind of get away with that and maybe this is like the future of game development in a way that we're having a little glimpse of, where you can really build the level in real time right now and make decisions. It's uh, presented by Epic Games, the Unreal Engine developers, uh, as like uh, an amazing tool for huge companies like these developers developer teams to work together and, you know, iterate and, uh, you know, having feedback from uh, all kinds of people involved in the project. But also, if you're just a one person working on the thing, you know, just an indie one man developer, it's a huge thing as well, because I don't need to create a plan except for like a script for the game itself, because there are so many details and specific events and phrases I need to make sure I don't forget about. I would so forget all of them if I wouldn't write it down. But after this, I don't need anything else. All I need to do is to start building according to my vision of how I want things to be. So this is really good in just that. So we need the meadow part. Quite a few of them, actually. So one of them here, another one here, another one here, and finally here. Now let's see how it goes. I assume you can totally go here, but I feel like yeah, these are actually smaller trees. They actually introduce a collision. Like maybe John will be able to go through here, but maybe not. But I, I don't want to add like an actual path spline, which is not a problem. I, I will be able to do it if it's necessary, but I can just do this <laughs> like that. 
and yeah, just little areas, you know, so in here, like, hmm, oddly, these guys will probably be a problem, I wonder why it made them like this, should be wider than that, so yeah, after a little walk, here's another area, maybe an undulating soil will be in this part, you know, this, that, oh, what about this meadow, it's pretty separated here, let's connect it a bit, I can also just alt click and add like a nice little connection, nice, the rocks are, are a bit random of course, I wonder if I should add some more rules to the way they're located, you know, maybe a bit just closer to um, edges of the paths and everything, because, you know, who would build like, these paths, they're not necessarily normal areas that are a part of some city or town, but still, you know, if there are paths, who would make a path right over a, a rock, you know? <laughs> they would probably walk around it, so it makes sense if I lay a path somewhere, the rocks should be around the path. So, that's our map so far, which is kind of cool to be able to see it like this. Yeah, I, I kind of like it, it's symmetrical, it's, uh, it feels special. <laughs> so there will be a bunch of stuff going on, uh, but right now I want to add like a little kind of like a block in of the actual gate, but it won't be just a block in, it will be an actual like beginning of the sculpt, which is something I uh, did before and it works pretty well. So let's go ahead and do a thing. I wonder, can I immediately go ahead and create an object from scratch, right? Because usually I use like a primitive, but what's cool in Unreal Engine, you can pretty much create, yeah, you can just throw in a primitive right away to start from. Let's say like a cylinder. Ooh, pretty nice. So here it is. Uh, can I like something click and drag to add another one right away? Like copy it. So this will be like one of those pillars, so height, let's make it 5 meter tall, so John wouldn't even try. I guess I can, yeah, just create another one, it uh, preserves all the settings. What the hell is a pattern? Create patterns of meshes. Whoa, okay, I like that. <laughs> so, this guy, pattern, but in a different axis. Dope. Whoa. But yeah, actually, I need just two. <laughs> But yeah, what I want to do right now is, isn't there a way to kind of, I remember there was a command, something like start playing from here, play from here. Oh, wow, it worked. Yeah, let's get rid of that. So, uh, there will be a bunch of dense bushes in here, and John is like, ah, oh, what the hell, and yeah, this is quite a massive gate, that's pretty cool. So. I guess with the way things show up, probably there wouldn't be an actual bird in here at first, because it shouldn't be noticeable at first. Or maybe it, like it wouldn't just move, you know, not very noticeable. Maybe there will be another bird on the other side, but that one will be a metal bird, and this one will be a, an alive bird. That's why it won't be noticeable. That's quite a massive gate. I love it. It feels very important, and like you really want to open it. I think it's a good idea. I, I kind of thought of it at first as a bit of a smaller thing, but why not make it big and special? Also, yeah, of course, after the gate, things keep going, like there will be a path going forward. And here, it won't be noticeable, it will come as a surprise later, but after this area, the forest changes into an actual, like, deep forest, where all the trees are super tall and uh, naked, and only, like, creating a very tall ceiling covering with leaves uh, at the top, like pine forest, so, um, yeah, with very tall kind of stuff. Uh, that will also be a, a much easier forest to render for Unreal Engine, so that will be a good thing. But yeah, that's pretty much the way a much deeper and older forest looks like anyway. This whole thing looks right now as a park, and I want to have it looking like that for now, before we solve this area. Let's make it even taller. I feel like it should be taller. And that will also give a better reason of why John haven't noticed the bird first. So now I'll add this guy 
and it will be like 10 centimeters in radius so it's 20 in diameter pretty intense but um this is not gonna be just like a bar of the gate it will be uh, like the edge of one of the door wings so this and another one let's make a pattern there this is so cool like different ways to generate things okay so this is the good length i'll just duplicate it and put it like this oh there is a line right here i didn't have to use necessarily those pattern things i could just align but yeah what i wanted to do is a mirror Ooh, dope i didn't have to merge them and it totally worked and like this like a little bit of a distance in between them only to have like a massive lock in between or something like that. Now let's fill that thing up with a whole bunch of bars. So another cylinder. It will be now 5 centimeters in radius. So 10 in diameter. And that's where we add a whole lot of more of its copies. How cool is that? Alright. Like that's very dense maybe a bit wider would look better 15 centimeters you still can't really yeah so it's an important part it needs to like barely let the human head to get through it <laughs> so um maybe 30 then which means there's 20 centimeters should be enough like i gotta say like i haven't tried like i i never worked in unreal engine 4 but as far as i know these tools are super new like they really started adding this kind of modeling features here only in unreal engine 5 and they're freaking based like there's so many things in here including like modifying the pivot point and all kinds of mirrorings and uh, all these radial symmetries and everything like everything's in here including voxel operations uv mapping I i'm not sure about actual mapping though there's auto uv but i don't know how that will work auto uv jesus christ patch builder uv atlas okay i mean not a lot of things can be better than the original cylinder uv map on the cylinder so yeah, we have this going on, and these things should be raised above the ground a bit, so they would look like they can actually open. Yeah, also, there should be no way to dig underground, right? So John would try to dig a hole under the gate or the fence, but it should have like a metal bar going all over here, like uh, that goes deep underground or something like that. So let's add that as well. Completely non-penetrable area. See, I'll go a little bit deeper and... Yeah, that's good stuff. So another one goes here. And this one will be much thinner. That will be... Actually, we need to half it and just make it on one side. Oh, that's massive. Should I, like, add some in the middle, right? Okay, I'm gonna union this. Ooh, that looked... Oh, okay. It was thinking. So this is what it looks like. Now I wanna see a, like, voxel whatever. I don't know like this all right let's keep it this way so now this is like sculpting ready oh my god we can do this kind of stuff so yeah i was thinking to add like a little curve to make the gate look like this but how do you do it in a bit of a more accurate way <laughs> oh this is probably exactly what i need Nice. So in the x-axis we don't need anything. And in y we could use a few. And in z probably don't need anything as well. That is dope. Totally forgot about this thing. Oh, could you like, yeah, smooth much better? Oh, this will be lovely. So yeah, uh, I keep this one flat. So the cylinder of this bar right here wouldn't be deformed too much i understand it still interpolates a little bit but if it's at the very beginning there it should be fine mm, looks fun uh oh i can't change it already i i just thought this is probably not the best but i mean uh one way to do it so like this and let's replace with a mirror all right, this is pretty good. So let's say it's kind of like this is a base. Uh, I'll probably add more stuff so it would uh, resonate better with that altar item. 
this one. Oh yeah, it kind of feels like something. I feel like it would be kind of cool to make these plates on top of these things as well. So they would kind of talk to each other a bit. But it's not like we're gonna see it much. Uh, maybe in the cutscene there will be all kinds of angles. But yeah, overall, I feel like we need to give a bit more space here. Uh, and maybe some special area around it as well. So it wouldn't be so empty, like a mobile altar. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, much more radial slices. 36 will do, I guess. Also 64 will do. So interesting. I had no idea that this modeling mode is a huge deal about just aligning objects. It's not about uh, modeling anything. You're manipulating objects, aligning them to each other. It's pretty cool that it's here. Would be best if I would know that before. Yeah, like this, except. Cool, I learned a bunch about modeling and manipulating objects today. So yeah, something similar I'll do with like a section of just the fence, and then it will be like an instanced object that keeps repeating forever here and like there. And there we have our gate with a fence. So probably like this, 7 meters by 7 meters kind of thing, so they are kind of rectangular. Also, they should be lowered. So how far does it go? Oh, th that's way too far. Oh, is this like something I can manipulate? Whoa, that's so cool. Except, now I'm gonna mirror this, I guess? Okay, let's play from here. Alright, so here's our altar. Oh, it should be turned around. And here's our massive gate. Oh, the collisions work too. That's nice. Something's missing here. But overall, we can get a pretty good idea of what things are gonna look like. Here's uh, one of the areas. All right, pretty cool. And how quick is that? <laughs> Uh, also, I don't think I made uh, that super dense sculpting ready gate and nanite mesh, which I totally should. Again, this is just like to see how things are. And they're pretty cool. Alright. Man, this is massive. Also, I should add a thing. Oh, here it is, right? Right? Yeah. So, I, I so forgot where it was. Uh, like, how do I do it at all? So there's this blueprint object that I can create and I would add a camera. Let's put it this way. And this volume, when John overlaps it, the camera would switch to that position. And let's make it like, like this. Let's see how it goes. No, not from the beginning. Play from here. And we approach. <sighs> Dope. <laughs> and then a switch of a shader, removing the lens distortion. Whoa, that's some trailing, what the hell? Uh, probably uh, the settings of a static mesh are wrong on that cylinder. It's just happening around that cylinder, so strange. But yeah, this is how things would work. Never saw such strong trails. <laughs> And here's our massive fence that totally works as a fence now, which is cool. What about that uh, furthest area? There it is. So yeah, again, right now it looks super bare bones, but keep in mind I'll add more of those landscape patches. It will be more of a variety of uh, like surface of the landscape. As well as, of course, we only have a small portion of assets spawning from here. So if we turn everything back on, done. And that's looking much more lively. All right. Well, it's looking pretty fortunate, even growing exactly at nice places to have a little extra something going on there. Pretty dope. And then we walk here and everything's looking pretty cool. 
I think I want the forest to grow right, right behind the fence, you know, so more trees would stick out in between the bars and stuff like that. Like, it won't be super accurate, but I think it doesn't matter too much. But yeah, this is pretty much the area, and it's pretty cool. Nice. Of course, um, the biggest challenge I had is, like, to build all the, um, like, puzzle mechanics and making sure everything works. But mostly I think it will be like about positioning a camera statically like this and then, uh, you know, triggering certain objects to do certain things, depending on what John did and what John has on him, stuff like that, you know. Uh, shouldn't be too complex in that regard, actually. But we'll see, of course, maybe there's more to it. Like, they say making puzzles is kind of like making a mini-game every time. We'll see about that. Uh, it depends on the type of a puzzle, of the way you put things together. Like, I'm not uh, creating a, a Hellraiser cube in here or something like that, where you need to, like, have special mechanics of rotating it to make sure you solve it, stuff like that. Maybe eventually I'll be adding stuff like that. Uh, when you start solving a certain thing at a certain place, it switches to a different mode where with different controls. Instead of controlling a character, you're controlling a puzzle. But I feel like it would be, like, breaking the immersion a little bit. Why are you controlling a puzzle? Con Control a character that's controlling a puzzle, you know? <laughs> but, of course, there's a nuance to everything. But yeah, so far it's pretty cool. We'll be working on special assets for all these uh, zones in the nearest future. So you guys look forward to that. For now, this is it. Let me know what you guys think. I don't know what for you to think about all of this, but it's just a process. Um, happy to just finally decide and uh, just do the thing, you know? No matter what it will be, it has to be, so let's go ahead and do it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! So yeah, we can add some fun variety to the landscape before we approach the gate like this. That should be fun, right? Unless you crash. It worked! And it looks terrible! Cool!